Dear Dracula, I think you are the coolest vampire. I wish you could come to my boring old town. That would be so cool. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's the door. Oh, it's Dracula. Oh, I got my letter already. Oh, I'm so excited. I, I, oh God. Oh, it's a giant brain mantis. Ah, crap. I got the Dario Argento Dracula. That's the worst one. Oh God, it's eating my head as mantises are known to do. Oh God. So, uh, so should I start the podcast? Okay, um, we watch Dear Dracula today on... We are ostensibly uh, watching a movie day for... Little babies, I don't know. I found out this little piece of info this week. Did you know they changed the alphabet song? How, what? The, are they adding new letters? No, it doesn't. Well, no, it doesn't go like A B Squanch now or anything. I was uh, I was hanging out with past guest and friend of the podcast, Leslie Dos Remedios. She has a baby girl, and she was showing me they've changed the rhythm or I guess the meter of the alphabet song. And apparently, it's because kids these days, kids these days. They can't handle the concept of LMNOP. Oh. The shift is too much for them. Yeah. I mean, I struggled with that a little bit as a kid, too. You, tra- you train yourself out of it. But, yes, it's like yeah, LMNOP. Yeah, tra- exactly. You train yourself when out you're, of it. I you guess, know, when you're yeah. in a hurry to get to, you know, recess or whatever and, and preschool, like, yeah, you want to uh, <laughs> you want to speed through that alphabet. No, I guess, yeah, I guess they had, like, a bunch of kids in, like, a test or something. And, you know, they were, like, listening to the alphabet song. It's like H-I-J-K. And they're all like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm enjoying this. This is my vibe. And then Elemental P. And then they just all immediately started freebasing heroin or something. Like, they just, their minds couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, the new, have you heard the new song? No. Okay, I'm, so. Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, I, I'm familiar with it. Right, it's, yes. It's the yeah. tune of uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, yeah. So, this is the new version. This is the new improved version for 2020 for for everyone's delicate sensibilities. It goes, I won't do the whole thing. It goes H I J K L M N. O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. I didn't add like a little flare there. There is a pause in between V and W. And it's that V pause that makes me just so rationally angry. Well, I'm, like, I'm what? really glad. There's only one letter that has more than one syllable, and it's fucking W. So you go V W X Y Z. You don't need to change it. It's you I'm really happy that you're letting me know this now, though, Castle, that the next time I'm singing the alphabet song in public, I don't look like an idiot. You better, man. You better not embarrass me in public. Anyway, welcome back, however you wish to self-identify, to The Fuck Is This, where we dive through DVD and soar through streaming apps to find the weird, the bizarre, and the unloved. I'm your host, Cast to Spell Lesgard, and with me is my co-host, Gravison Rafter. Gravison Rafter? Come yes. on now. That's what I said. Gra- he's rich, and you can pour him over a rope. Good gravy. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Good gravis and rafter. No, we're using our trademark spooky names because contrary to popular belief, it is still two months of Halloween, colon, war on Christmas 2, colon, hypercube, colon, a rope of sand. Did you get all that, people? <laughs> we're covering a lot of ground in this episode between new alphabet songs and, like, Adding additional titles to our Halloween themes. It's gonna be a good one. Today on the show, we're continuing a tradition we started all the way back with episode three. Mainly, if it's Halloween, we gotta watch a weird Dracula movie. Was that a tra- was that a Halloween movie? I thought we released that one in like fucking January. We did, but it was still our Halloween episode, so we're gonna count. Halloween it, so. is, is, is in, it's in it can strike at any moment, as we addressed before. That's why I called the spirit of Halloween. Yes, it can. It can strike any time, so be ready. So yes, so currently on the show, we've already covered Dracula in space. Smoke and weed with Coolio in Dracula 3000. And we've also seen him turn into a giant CGI praying mantis in Dracula 3D from Daddy Dario Argento. But this year we're going as far in the opposite direction as we can with 2012's Dear Dracula, a 45-minute CGI animated movie with a weirdly impressive voice cast. I suggest that we watch an animated movie because having a look at our uh, YouTube channel where I have all of our uh, episodes broken down in different playlists. The animation category was looking a little scant uh, this year. We did three last year, 
And we haven't even touched the genre this year. What? We did three last year? We did Underdogs, we did uh, Flight of Dragons, and I considered Master Q an animated movie. Oh, okay, all right. I'd say we did two and a half animated movies. Even though it was more Space Jam live action and cartoon hybrid. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so we needed to scratch that. My cartoon. logic is sound, damn it. <laughs> yeah, we need to scratch that cartoon itch a little bit. So we, we threw this in here because it's got a, a weird-ass cast. But before we get into that, Jameson, we are once again recording remotely from our respective apartments. But you are not alone. I certainly am not. My, my apartment is haunted <laughs> two times over this evening. <laughs> Today I am joined by a, a good friend of mine. I've known her for many years. She is a jack-of-all-trade, a master of none. You told me to say that. <laughs> Did I tell you to say that? Yes. Well, it's on the okay. record. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I totally told you to say that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name's Kate. Cosplayer and tattoo artist Kate Shee, everybody. I, I, li- I like scary horror things and, and, and fun, fun stuff of horror a Halloween thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go with that. Yeah, so checks out. <laughs> and uh, we're also joined by her friend Alyssa, who is uh, um, in the back. <laughs> keep, it, keep it silent. <laughs> she she has co-guest status. Co, she's our first co-guest. I haven't even introduced myself to her yet, because she was taking a phone call before we started the recording. She has an open invitation to join the conversation whenever she wants to. Whenever there's a little... Oh, she is saying no. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm good. <laughs> but no, it's so, it's so funny that, uh, you know, we're following the social distance protocols and the recording like from a safe distance and I have invited more people into my home. Yes, one of us is. <laughs> one out of four ain't bad. <laughs> That's not too bad. That's not the exact problem why we got in this situation in the first place. Anyway, Kate, on this podcast, we watch a bunch of weird, crazy, silly, bizarre, stupid, outlandish, uh, baffling movies. What are some of the weirdest movie watching experiences you've ever had? Uh... Good question. I first one that comes to mind is Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, great! That was a really weird movie. It was also really funny, and it kind of like fits the whole sort of Halloweeny theme, I guess. It was mostly just chaos, and I appreciate that. I'm friends with one of the victims in that morning, in in that movie rather. My friend Adam Bouchain is the first guy who gets killed. He He's the guy who runs into the tree branch because oh, really? he wasn't looking where he was going. Yeah, <laughs> It's a fun one. I like oh, to yeah. drop that one at parties. Yeah, so Kate, you've actually watched Dear Dracula. We we need to... we Jameson, you and I need to get a lot better at telling the guests not to watch the movie before the show starts. Uh, yeah. I guess you're lucky enough in the sense that this was a, a very short movie, so you only need to sit through it. I mean, you have to sit through it twice because we're going to force you to watch it again. Because neither Kaz and I have seen this movie, so... Oh, no, it's fine. It's a good refresher. I, I'll, I, it was... It was great. I, I'll watch it again, like w- without right, without well, I issue. Guess, <laughs> I I guess that's a good sign. Yeah, don't worry about it. I guess you're not. Be- I guess you're not begging us to watch literally anything else. You've agreed to be on the show, and you could have easily have said, "I'm never talking to you again, James." <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, Dear Dracula here. It's based on the graphic novel by Joshua Williamson, a graphic novel for children. It has a weirdly stacked voiceover cast. Starring as the main man himself, as Dracula, we have Ray Liotta. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a Dracula. (laughs) I like like how you went with a a Dracula rather than a vampire. Than a, than a vampire, yeah. Gives the impression that there are there are more than one. There's more than one Dracula. Jameson, I'm just going to say this right now. I have been racking my brain all day to try and uh, construct a joke around the reference in Goodfellas where Paul Sorvino slices the garlic really thin so it liquefies in the pan because he's Dracula. And he doesn't like garlic. I wrote that I have like a page here of stalled jokes. None of them work. So I just I just want to open this podcast by admitting defeat. I was not clever enough to come up with a garlic based Ray Liotta Goodfella vampire joke. And to everyone, I just want to apologize. So you had nothing to really, do today. <laughs> I really <laughs> let you all down. <laughs> you wasted a day coming up with a joke that is like you can't even use, and I just come like marching in. It's I mean it is the most famous quote. You can attribute to Ray Liotta, so you and I'm, and I'm, don't get too I'm many more points. familiar with uh, you know the parody of the Good Feathers from Animaniacs than I am from. Oh yeah, that was an imperfect parody. They got the one pigeon was obviously De Niro, the other pigeon was obviously Pesci, 
they didn't really know how to do a Ray Liotta pigeon, so they just kind of made him stupid. Not really. And, like, those segments were so weird because all the jokes were for, like, the parents who had seen Goodfellas. A kid's not going to get a- a half the Scorsese references in that, that bit. Speaking of which, though, do you, do you see the trailer for that new Animaniacs? No. Oh, looking good. Looking, looking accurate. Right looking on. 90s accurate. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm excited for that. I'm not going to buy Hulu, but I will torment the shit out of that when that comes about. You familiar with the Animaniacs? Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) What was your favorite bit? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm running off of very little sleep, but, you know, uh, I do appreciate the the illegal torrenting. (laughs) (laughs) That's my city. (laughs) She lives on the high seas. It's the only way we're able to watch half of the movies that we uh, we, uh, cover on this show. Illegally. So joining uh, Mr. Leota uh, in this animated film, we also have Emilio Estevez playing the role of Myro. I haven't seen Emilio Estevez in anything since The Mighty Ducks. You know, I was looking up uh, Emilio's career. It's really interesting to compare him to Ray Leota. Ray Leota, uh, sometime around mid-2005, he, like, dove right into the straight-to-DVD game. Ray Leota has something crazy like 200 film credits. He's just in too many movies. Just likes working? He's working. He likes to work. Conversely, Emilio Estevez, and I looked it up, in the last decade, from 2010 to 2019, Emilio Estevez only has four acting credits, which are Dear Dracula, another animated film, and then two movies that he directed. Compare that to Ray Liotta, who in 2012 has 11 acting credits alone. Very Jesus. different work ethics there. Where does he find the fucking time for that? He likes to be, and it's not just, and like, and Ray Liotta's like acting career is actually pretty diverse. He does a lot of like garbage straight to DVD stuff, but big Hollywood movies also sneak in there as well too. Like he'll be in like acclaimed dramas like Place Beyond the Pines or Marriage Story. He was in Marriage Story last year. He was really good in that. I, I haven't seen it. I've seen the memes for it. <laughs> Pops up all over the place. And actually right now is a really uh, good time to be watching a uh, a Halloween Ray Liotta movie because he's also currently in that Hubie Halloween that's on Netflix. Oh yeah. I tried watching that and uh, in the first five minutes Ben Stiller reprises that role he had from yeah, he does. Happy Gilmore where he's the mean orderly and I was like oh it's gonna be this kind of movie isn't it they're they're building a cinematic universe it's the happy Madison universe they're bringing back all of like the one note characters I will spoil one thing for you I regret to admit Rob Schneider does not come back and say you can do it I know I'm I was surprised too fucking no point for me to watch that movie (laughs) yeah I know it's a missed opportunity very missed opportunity actually you know what Hubie Halloween is fine it's not the most of it's not the most offensive Happy Madison thing I've ever seen. It's about on par with Little Nicky. Uh, I think I'm one of the few people that actually defends Little Nicky. So, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Right uh, speaking of um, our three main stars here, we, uh, we, ha- we have a real uh, sort of like three bears bowl of porridge situation going on here. Whereas uh, Ray Liotta, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. This is leading somewhere. Just stay with me. Ray Liotta. He's that first bowl of porridge, right? He's a great actor, too many movies. He's in too many movies, needs to be in less movies. Emilio Estevez, great actor, not enough movies. Needs to be in more movies. Matthew Lillard is that third bowl of porridge. He is in just enough movies that you don't get tired of him. Yeah, he was in, uh, what, the fucking Scooby-Doo live-action movies? Uh, Matthew Lillard has about 117 acting credits. About a fourth of those are all shaggy. Mm. He's been making that shaggy. shaggy money for, like, two decades now, and he's he's perfectly happy doing that. And and he's good. He's good as shaggy. So. I, I last uh, saw him in uh, Halt and Catch Fire. He had a recurring role in uh, one of the... He had a recurring role in the third season. And I was what? like, wow, Matthew Lillard got fat. Did he? Mm-hmm. I don't think he... I don't think Matthew Lillard... First of all, I mean, all bodies are beautiful. This is not a body-shaming podcast. I think Matthew Lillard gained weight. I, I think it was more the fact that he was a wisp of a man before, and then he just grew into, like, regular adult body size. Yeah, he just got old. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. It happens to us all. Uh, yeah, so Matthew Lillard is playing the coveted role of Mailman Gus. Do you remember that role? Yeah, I do. All right. <laughs> That's, uh, all right. Word. Awesome. <laughs> Word. <laughs> You sure you don't want a coffee? <laughs> no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, sorry. Okay. It's fine. This is a relaxed fit. Coffee. I just don't want to spoil anything, because I've already seen the movie. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So, 
All right. Yeah. Okay. Get off we your appreciate back. that. We yeah, we really do. We appreciate that because yeah, anything could happen in this. There could be a last minute twist. We don't know. So yeah, we appreciate closed lips. Anyway, I don't know where I went with that. Uh, anyway, this is why I write a lot of things down because I'm not the best ad libber. Anyway, filling out the rest of this cast, playing the main character in this, we have an actor named Nathan Gamble who was James Gordon Jr. in The Dark Knight, and he was also Tom Jane's son in The Mist. Do you see The Mist? Uh, no, but I've heard very good things oh, about it. Boy. Oh, I'm actually boy. surprised I haven't seen it. You want, if you want to watch a movie that pairs nicely with the, the dread and the ennui and the helplessness that we're all feeling right now, watch yourself The Mist. That, you will be depressed for, for a week. Uh, that is, that is a bummer of a movie. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I full heartedly agree with that. That was, uh, yeah. It was yeah. pretty depressing, but it's a good film, though. I, I liked it. It's an excellent film. That's one of those movies that they re-released in black and white. I, I heard that there's a black and white version that, uh, that, like that works really it well. Works. It actually works really well. It actually looks really good in black and white. Yeah, and then filling out the rest of this cast is Marion Ross, a.k.a. Mrs. Cunningham from Happy Days. And filling out the ancillary characters, we have voiceover legends like Tara Strong, Yuri Lowenthal, and Troy Baker. Yeah, I did have a peek at the uh, cast list and like seeing like that the voice cast like that, I was like, oh, cool. Even, like, casual fans of anime stuff should probably know who Tara Strong is. Oh, Tara Strong's a legend. She was Bubbles and Powerpuff Girls. She was in, like... Raven like, and Teen Titans. Yeah. Yeah, like, name a cartoon from the past, like, 20 years. She was yeah, probably she's in it. it. Yeah, she's great. And Troy Baker has the distinct... He's probably the only actor who has the distinction of a guy who's voiced both Batman and the Joker. Yeah. It, those, those are you know, good bragging rights. Uh, what I will say is that his Joker isn't really his Joker. He got that role because he can do a very good mimic of Mark Hamill's Joker. Yeah, but I, I agree with that. And Mark Hamill's getting a little long in the tooth for his Joker doesn't even sound like the Mark Hamill Joker anymore. So I say um, pass the torch along to Troy Baker. Fair enough. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that, too. You know, it's like when you watch a, a new episode of The Simpsons and Lisa Simpson starts talking about school and you're just all like, you are a 65-year-old woman. And it is quite obvious that you are a 65-year-old woman. I watched, like, some clip of a recent episode of The Simpsons and, my God, Marge's voice is just getting hard. Oh, yeah. They gotta, yeah. That they, poor they, woman. Look, they got to wrap up The Simpsons at some point for a number of reasons, but one of those reasons, if we gotta give poor Julie Kavner a rest. That that woman is going to explode one day if we force her to voice Marge Simpson any longer. Had, I, I think she, I read a quote from her where she said, had I known this show would have gone on for 33 years, I would have picked a better voice for Marge. <laughs> A good lesson. A good lesson for all of them. Well, Dear Dracula is directed by Chan Vanderkeer. He's an animator who worked on shows like Being Ian, Planet Sheen, and the Nickelodeon-produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where he worked as a series director. He has directed one other animated movie, which came out two months after Dear Dracula. It is called Abominable Christmas, and... It also has a fairly interesting voice cast as Abominable Dad. Oh, look at this. Ray Liotta. As oh, wow. Mr. Winterbottom, Emilio Estevez. So this guy's like like Tarantino and reusing his, all his f favorite actors, right? And Matthew Lillard, who upgraded from Mailman Gus to Dog Catcher Al. So Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> this is this is a real Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost kind of this, totally this is, collaboration. This stuff. is pure speculation, but I'm going to assume when Ray Liotta went in to lay down his track for Dear Dracula, that was a two part day. He started in the morning <laughs> with Dear Dracula, he got a paid lunch, and then it was straight to Abominable Snowman Christmas or whatever. We, we got two scripts, one for Dracula and one for the Abominable Snowman. Which one you want and to do? And he only read one ahead of time, and then they sucker punched him with the other one. But you know mm. what? Ray Liotta went home to his mansion at the end of that day, and he said, you know what? I did good work today. I did good, honest work today. I, I really stretched myself as an actor. In the morning, I was a vampire, and by the end of the day, I was a, I was a yeti. <laughs> I was <laughs> yeah all right well uh that's all i gotta say uh anything you guys want to touch on on your end before uh, we want this also if i didn't mention this earlier this is a 45 minute movie mm. so we can you know we can take Very our time brisk. we can take our time with this one we can go on mm. as really many. really sink our teeth into the material and uh, let it breathe and you know i didn't try to make that a vampire joke but but you did fuck. 
and it's recorded now, and everyone... Yeah, much like your garlic bit, that didn't really go anywhere. That's like, why I didn't do it, it, because it wasn't... I didn't have enough time to workshop it. So that's why I didn't go ahead with it, because I knew it was gonna... It was gonna sink like a stone! But all right, uh, let's go watch this movie for five-year-olds, and when we come back, we'll have more spooky goodness after this. You ladies ready? Yeah, let's do it! Woo! Woo! It's a party over here. Saturday night! All right. <laughs> this is what we do now. Hey, guys, it's Kaz. And for this week's charity spot, I want to talk to you all about lobsters. Canada is the largest supplier of lobsters in the world. And Nova Scotia is responsible for harvesting about half of the lobsters for the country. But right now, there is a devastating and deeply harmful dispute happening within this industry. Tensions have always existed between non-indigenous commercial fishermen and the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet people of the Sape Kanakati First Nations, who in 1999 were issued a ruling by the Supreme Court of Canada that they had the right to sustain themselves by hunting and fishing and to earn a moderate livelihood even in the off-season. The Mi'kmaqs, who, just to remind everyone, were here first, have lived with this imperfect ruling for about a decade now, which doesn't allow them to accumulate any sort of wealth. In an effort to move forward, they launched their own fishery back in September and issued just 11 fishing licenses, making it more of a data-gathering operation on how to grow in the future than anything else. Now, there are rules and regulations about lobster fishing in the off-season, as when lobsters are molting, their shells are a lot softer, and they're easier to accidentally kill. But just for clarification... There are currently 979 lobster licenses in St. Mary's Bay, and each license is allowed to carry roughly 400 traps. The Sape Kanakati fishery, to remind you, has 11 licenses, with the right to carry 50 traps each. That's the equivalent of taking a shot glass's worth of water out of a full bucket. It does no harm. What is doing a lot of harm is the violent response from non-indigenous fishermen who for the past two months have been making calculated attacks on Mi'kmaq communities, destroying facilities, vans, and boats, and just this very morning, October 17th, set fire to a lobster pound in Middle West Pubnico, putting one person in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. What's more... Thousands of lobsters are being dumped on streets to rot and fester, and all of these attacks are supposedly in the name of conservation. Think about that. That is one of the most fucking insane things I've ever heard. People are worried that a small group of indigenous fishermen are harming the lobster population, so in an effort to conserve lobsters, they're literally destroying thousands of lobsters. That makes no sense, and we should call it what it is, a violent reactionary act of racism and domestic terrorism. So, what can we do about this? Well, sadly, not a whole lot right now, but there are a few things. You can donate to the Frontliners and show your support of Mi'kmaq tree rights and livelihoods through either e-transfer or PayPal. And you can do this by contacting Monica Henneberry, the Director of Finance of the Sape Kanakati First Nations, at the following email. Spelling is a little tricky, so I'm going to read this slow. You can send your donations via the email address monica at sapekanakati.ca that's monica with an h so m-o-n-i-c-a-h at s-i-p-e-k-n-e-k-a-t-i-k dot c-a and make your subject line 1752 moderate livelihood you can also contact your elected officials and tell them to do something about this. If you'd like a template with contact info of who to contact, make sure to follow us on our Instagram page, The F is This Podcast. Send us a private message. I'll make sure to forward the Google document that has all the information. Thanks for listening, everyone. And now, back to our silly little podcast about dumb movies. We're back from watching, entirely by default, the best movie that we've watched so far uh, during two months of Halloween this year. Yeah, uh, in so much as there's, like, really not a whole lot to complain about. <laughs> no, not really. No, we're going to have to go very detail-oriented with the plot. Very nitpicky. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing really to pull apart with this one. I think at the very end of our watch, you just texted me the word cute. And it's yep. like, yeah, I... Kind of feel like that sums up the entire second half of this podcast. It was cute. Uh, Kate, how was it the second time around? What did you think of it? 
Does it hold it up? It's good. I know it's so weird details like the when when you mentioned the music that they were playing at the the Halloween party, I'm like I didn't notice that the first time. <laughs> yeah, like some weird chanting with like underscored of a disco beat. And some like organ or whatever. Yeah, some kind of pipe organ. Yeah, it was very interesting. And it only seemed to last for about five seconds in that party scene, and then they didn't go back to it again. It was almost as if they knew that they needed some spooky party music for about five seconds of screen time, so they just took all the Halloween accoutrements, all like organs. Uh, wolf noises, this, that, and they just, they just, like, threw it all in the same sound file, and it's just all like that, you know, party music, there you go, that's what we need, yeah. It would certainly line up with the level of, I'm gonna say, effort uh, that went into <laughs> this, uh, 45-minute animated program, which very obviously was aired on Cartoon Network, given- What, what gave that away? Was it all the, the promo cuts between the quote-unquote commercial break? We now return to Dear Dracula on Cartoon Network. By the third time it happened, I was actually kind of disappointed that we weren't watching the full uncut version that aired on Cartoon Network with all the Halloween commercials and everything. I, I feel like that would have been more of a nostalgic throwback if we got to see all the Cartoon Network bumpers and everything. Oh yeah, I'm like, I, I recently came back from uh, visiting my buddies in Nanaimo and uh, just as we're winding down the evening and we're, you know, half in the bag ourselves, what do you want to watch? How about this 30 minute YouTube compilation of old commercials from the 90s and call that a trip down memory lane and that... That was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's always fun. What did you watch? Wait, uh, what were some of the commercials you watched? Oh, God. Like old Hot Wheels commercials? Promos with from... The, with the guy who talks really fast? Yeah, Hot Wheels leading the way. Oh, that's... Oh, no, sorry. I was thinking of the Micro Machines guy for a second. Um, There was one for, like, a, like just like an N64, but having, like, a demo reel of, like, games that were... It was just a, a commercial for the N64 and what that's was available. That's scratching my nostalgia itch there. Anything N64 related... I'm all in, yeah. And one doll that was called uh, Nighttime Stretch It Susie, which I thought, that seems like a very suggestive sounding name. <laughs> Nighttime Stretching Susie? Stretch It. Nighttime Stretch It Susie. That's even I'm worse. So I know, it's worse. <laughs> so much to unpack there. Wow. Yeah, um, that, like, I, I think uh, I've seen her working down by the shoreline <laughs> after dark. <laughs> hey, we don't judge. Susie had to find a way to, to earn a living in this economy just like everyone else. You know? Uh, yeah. So, Dear Dracula. Yeah, that was the movie. It was animated, sort of. It was... <laughs> kind of. Oh, God. That... So, I, I get that it's like a half hour or whatever movie meant for kids. But, like, half hour shows for kids that are CG animated have a bit more detail in the character designs. This looks like rough reboot. <laughs> Both, both, both in the way uh, the the animators uh, approached animating the characters, and uh, in, in the sense that it looks like the TV show reboot. Yes, no, this this definitely looked like animation where the program just crashed uh, continuously as they were trying to build it. Yeah, like we we can't we can't spend the entire last week before we got to push it out to Cartoon Network. We can't re-render it. Let's just put like the previous stuff and put it out there. And I'm sure I'm sure the animation or the animators uh, who worked at the studio, I'm sure they all worked their ass off on this and got fired by the end of it anyways. <laughs> yeah, as is normal for, for people working in the animation industry. Yeah, they, they all... It, it's it's not a quality piece of animation if uh, the animators still have their jobs by the end of it, apparently. That's... <laughs> That's how we that's how we treat animators in this society. That's the hallmark of a good animated piece. It did seem like a bit of a rush job. It kind of seemed like the attitude was all like, "Look, guys, we only have Emilio Estevez for two hours. He's got to record dialogue for to two whole movies. Let's we we're not we don't need to be detail oriented here. Let's just get the fucking is how's the scene? Is it done? Good. Just fucking get. I don't care. Get it out! Anyway, it's airing tonight. It's airing live. Maybe that abominable Chris, uh, Christmas movie that was like the A crew. And Dear Dracula was the B crew that they had to work on. <laughs> they put all of their baskets in Abominable Snowman, yeah. Did you notice at the Halloween party later there were two little Abominable Snowman children? No. I think that's old Chad Vanderweer laying in his world building. He's like, building like his universe. Like with the Pixar movies and their Easter eggs through all, through all their other shit. Yep, he's building his universe which consists of... Two 45-minute movies. Mm -hmm. So Dear Dracula. Dear Dracula is is the heartwarming story of a young man named Sam. He's the neighborhood weird kid. 
in so much that he seems like a perfectly normal kid. He just has a pet spider and lives with his grandma. He's got a pet tarantula named Weber. Yeah. There are weirder people out there than that. Not in this neighborhood, apparently. At least he lived with a parent. There were no other parents in this in that neighborhood. That is very true. Well, parents cost animation time, Jameson. So this is a weird neighborhood with one adult, and it's ruled by kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How scary! Yeah. So, Christ, what happens? So, yeah, the tarantula builds a web over the uh, opening credits. Kate, do you you have something to to say about the spider? Oh, yeah. When I was watching, I was like, nothing bad better happen to that spider, or else I'm I'm turning the movie off. I, I was very relieved to see that nothing bad happened to the spider. The spider was the this movie's MVP, I gotta say. Yeah. I love the spider. Mainly because he did not talk. Yeah. And that that is points in in the bank for me, I think, in, in, in terms of the characters in the movies that we watch. He's not a wisecracking spider, but he's like one of those characters in a kid's movie where anyone will freely talk to the spider and communicate with it as if like they are having a two-way conversation. Well, because they've animated the spider to be the size of most of the children's heads. <laughs> so you you kind of have to give it the, the attributes of, you know, someone who's in the room with you when the spider is that size. They try and cover their asses by calling it a tarantula. It doesn't really look like a tarantula, though, but... This no. is pure nitpicking at this point because this movie is so bare. And I did ask the people in the room with me, and I asked you as well, Kaz, do tarantulas even spin webs? Because Weber, or Webster, whatever the fuck his name is, enters every scene by, like, rappelling down from off-camera, spinning from a web. But I don't know if tarantulas spin webs that that way. They're ambush hunters, right? They don't, no. They shoot out silk. They kind of, Tarantulas are kind of like Spider-Man in the sense they kind of, like, shoot silk and then it, like, captures their prey and then they, like, pull it back. Yeah, the tarantula's name was Weber. I do wish his name was Webster, though. Because if his name was Webster, then I would want him to talk and I would want him to say, what you talking about, Dracula, every five minutes. But sadly, that's not the world we live in. We live in reality. And in this reality, Sam is the weird kid. He hangs out at home with his grandma watching monster movie marathons. He sees... Uh, an advertisement for a Dracula action figure on TV. Presenting the classic Dracula action figure with his nine transducing spinning eyes, victim rings, spring like bangs, and lifelike coffin made from real Transylvanian wood. Not made from real wood. Don't be frightened. Spinning eyes, spring loaded fangs. Oh, I gotta have that. He got so excited. He asks his grandmother for it, and she says, You gotta wait until Christmas. So he says, Fuck that noise. I'm not gonna write to Santa. October 20, uh, 31st is right around the corner. So I'm gonna drop the title right here. I'm gonna write a letter to the big man himself. And he does. And he writes a letter to Dracula. And then we cut to Transylvania, and it is being delivered by Mailman Shaggy. I don't think that's how fucking monsters work. <laughs> they're, they're not like Santa Claus, where you can write to them and ask them for gifts. You would think that, and yet the entire movie would uh, we just watched proves yeah. that that is indeed what you can do. What monster would you write to, Kate? Um, that's a good question. Maybe, uh, Loch Ness? <laughs> the Loch Ness yeah. monster. Yeah. Talk to Nessie. <laughs> yeah. What is it about Nessie that yeah, you'd like to? Hey, what's it like at the darkest depths of the ocean, other than bone crushing pressure? Is it as metal as it sounds? Yeah. <laughs> would Would you be happy if if you wrote the Loch Ness monster and then the next day the doorbell rang and the Loch Ness monster was was on your front step and it took you on a an amazing journey of self discovery. If, if it can teach me how to breathe underwater, then yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty dope. That, that you could chalk that up to a success. Yeah. <laughs> well, I eagerly await that forty five minute animated movie. What kind of wacky shenanigans can can we get into next? Yeah, and like it won't even be that much of a time commitment. I mean, the movie took place over the course of one evening. <laughs> you could get Mike Myers to do his Shrek voice. There you go. Ah, oh, donkey! I'm the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> I don't know. (laughs) Speaking of accents, we get to meet Dracula himself uh, in this next scene here, and Ray Liotta definitely warms up his Dracula voice, which proves my theory that this was all the first take. By the end of the movie, he was really nailing it. He was, you know, he was substituting his W's with V's. It was working, but in those opening scenes, I'm like, oh, Ray. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Turn the effort knob up just a tad here. Uh, What's the use? I've lost it. Nobody's scared of Count Dracula anymore. There was a time when everyone would shudder when my name was spoken. But today, the younger generation don't find me scary. 
I was wondering, like, because like when when we were looking at movies to watch for this, like there was you saw like Ray Liotta as Dracula. Who envisioned this? Who thought this was going to be a good idea? We have to check it out. And I, I still beg the question, like, who did see the potential of Ray Liotta as Dracula? <laughs> because uh, he doesn't really come into the role until later down or as the movie winds up. But who I think just was consistent all the way like from beginning to end was uh, Emilio Estevez. I thought he was fine in this movie. He was fine, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's playing, uh, what the hell was that character? My, Myro? Not Milo, 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 yeah, Milo. Who's, who's, I guess, the Renfield stand-in of this. He's Dracula's servant, minion. He's a little green zombie dude. He's your classic minion, lick boots. He, he's, he's always giving Dracula compliments and saying, No, master, you're the best monster in the world. I bite your tongue, master. The mere mention of your name still makes some people quiver in their boots. If they're wearing boots, that is. Whatever their chosen footwear, they quake when they hear... Yeah, you know what? Leota warmed up to it. Emilio came out of the gate swinging. Overall, though, by the end of the movie, I kind of forgot it was both of them. I, yeah. I, I think I think they did a, a fair to all right job. Yeah, like to the point where like, I can't believe I'm saying this about either of these actors, but yeah, they're decent voice actors. They, they have a lot of character that comes through and I never would have pegged either of them for that. I mean, it does, you're right, Jameson, it does really beg the question, how did they manage to convince these two actors to be in this? Because with voice acting, it's not so much having a silly voice Voice. It's about having like character in the voice and uh, having that come through only through your voice. And a lot of professional voice actors, like our, all of our mutual friend Zach, will tell you he doesn't like it when a um, a, a big celebrity like an A lister will come into the recording booth and take a job from a character act, a character voice actor, because more often than not, the celebrity won't really do much to change their own voice and inflection. So I guess props to Emilio and Ray for... For doing the bare minimum? Doing a decent job with it. I wouldn't say they went crazy. I'd say they did the work. I'd say they did the thing that they were hired to do. This is a a perfect example of a type of movie that would probably piss Zach off. Because, you know, it's like, it's a TV movie made for Cartoon Network, so why on earth wouldn't you get a Jeff Bennett or a a Troy Baker to play Dracula? Why, Why... Because no one watching Nickelodeon knows who the fuck Ray Liotta is. And if they do, I I would question why they're watching Nickelodeon. Yeah, it, so when the parents are like, oh, do you want to watch this spooky Halloween movie with the kids? Like, I don't know. Well, it's got Ray Liotta in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That one's for the dads. There might be a few... I mean, of course, I'm speaking about my experiences. I don't know what the youth today are into. I mean, there might be a little more crossover between something like this and Mighty Ducks. I mean, Emilio Estevez, because of Mighty Ducks, because he did sort of, like, uh, appeal to the younger demographic in the 90s as kind of like a a bankable star for family movies. Ray Liotta, as as far as I can tell, has never been in a family movie. never touched it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the kids are into these days, uh, but what the movie tells us is they're not into the classic horror monsters. Yeah, Dracula's whole thing is uh, he's feeling past his prime and bitter and resentful at how kids are more into like slasher horror movie villains than they are like the ca- than, like the Wolfman or the creature from the Black Lagoon or whatever. Children these days with their Texas chainsaws and their different alphabet songs. Ah ah ah. Yeah, wh- why don't they like characters like the Wolfman and the Mummy? And then he proceeds to like throw shade at the Mummy. I've got to be honest. Never really found the money all that scared. He ruined the dark universe for all of us. <laughs> they did. So, speaking of voiceover actors who are kind of trying, uh, Matthew Lillard has about two minutes of screen time here as a nervous mailman. And look, when you hire Matthew Lillard to voice a nervous character, you know what's going to happen. You know what voice he's going to do. <laughs> the, the delivery for. Dracula? <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what else? I'm digging I for, for like that, you know? here. I really am. <laughs> yeah, that is this a voice is, we need to have other. in our project. <laughs> So, what happens next in the fucking movie? (laughs) Dracula gets the letter from Sam and uh, travels to America to visit his number one fan, so I guess he can have an ego boost. (laughs) Now, Transylvania and America gotta be a lot closer 
than I originally thought, because it takes no time for the two of them to travel to, you know, the city of America. They couldn't get any yeah. more specific Anytown than that. Anytown, USA. Just, yeah, exactly. They seemingly seem to travel there within the same day. Also, I kind of found it interesting that uh, Dracula pointedly says, Ah, a child from America! Okay, well, if they're not in America, why does your mailman clearly have an American accent? <laughs> What? Uh, oh, I mean, uh, this is the worst route I could have taken, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's a he's a postal employee, but uh, as we as we we know in the states right now, there seems to be a bit of a uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but a bit of sabotage going on with the U. Political on this show here, yeah. So he's like, well, I'm I'm gonna have to I gotta find work elsewhere. So I'm going Mailman, to Transylvania. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Mailman Gus didn't like the way the country was going, so he naturally went to Transylvania. Exactly. Where things are a lot, lot less scary than in America. Well, they're scary, but they're different a kind dealable. of scary. Yeah. 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 It's not, not psychologically scary. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the kind of scary that he wants. You know, the Dracula's ambition of what, what scary should be. So I guess Dracula reads the letter out loud, and it's just Sam writing a fan letter. Does he ask for the toy? Or does he just... Because Dracula doesn't deliver toys, so he wouldn't ask Dracula for the toy. I wish Dracula delivered toys. <laughs> I think this kid literally just saw a Dracula commercial on TV and then excitedly wrote to the actual Dracula saying, Hey, I saw a commercial with you in it. I don't know anything about Dracula. I don't know who you are. I don't know your work. <laughs> Which is funny because, like, when, when you have a story where Dracula befriends a kid and, like, kind of shows him the ropes and, and gives him, instills him with some confidence or whatever, I'm like, you do know who Dracula is, right? Yeah. You know, like, a famous monster who will kill people, who will seduce and manipulate women into becoming his brides. To be fair, he does technically do that in this movie. Explain. Not the bride part, but yeah, he he definitely does. Oh, like, hypnosis I, stuff. He does a little bit of seduction. He throws a little bit of seduction in there. Is all I'm saying. Look, all I'm saying is that this cartoon for children that doesn't even run an entire hour, I'm just saying the plot is a little loose. It, it, it doesn't have a great hook to hang its plot structure on. Weird, I know. Uh, oddly enough, which also which also begs the question: Why did this movie get made? Who is this movie for? Like they had a they had an hour of they had a block of television on Cartoon Network in like 2015 or whatever, and said, well. Rather than show like a fucking Halloween rerun of uh, Dexter's Lab or whatever. Let's just get Ray Liotta and Millie Ustavest together and make a fucking Dracula movie. You know, but let's also do the Dexter's Lab thing because that's that's a good show, and I'm sure the Halloween episode is fantastic. No, it's literally this is this movie exists literally to fill an hour. Mm. They 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 had a, a certain amount of airtime set aside for Summon Original, so let's do this. Hey, uh, I shop at the same CVS as Ray Liotta. I can probably convince him to do that and also do our Yeti movie as well. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so Sam... No, uh, Dracula uh, gets the letter... And uh, him and Myro uh, head on over to uh, America, USA, and they knock on his front door, uh, careful uh, not to uh, let Dracula get smoked by the sun, and Sam's grandma opens the door and immediately starts throwing shit at Dracula. Yeah. She really escalates things. Yeah, mistakes him for, like, a coffin salesman or just someone who's, like, shouldn't be you know, at, at the doorstep. You know, one of those door-to-door -door coffin salesmen that, that are plaguing our nation. Ma'am, you're clearly in the twilight years of your life. <laughs> May I interest you in a coffin? <laughs> things escalated so quickly between Dracula and the grandmother, I was dead certain, like, she was going to, like, leave the frame and come back with a shotgun. Just of, like, stand my ground! She would, like... Like, stake him to the heart without even knowing that he's a vampire first. <laughs> but yeah, he, he gets into the house by uh, using his hypnosis powers on Grandma, and she is hypnotized for the duration of this movie. But you forget that, because only sometimes do the animators remember to put the spirally circles in her eyes. Half of the time, she's perfectly normal. Well, not perfectly normal, because she's a horrifying bobblehead monstrosity of an animated character. <laughs> Every character is. You know, they're built like candy apples. I don't know what it was about that grandma. That grandma creeped me out more than it, than anything else in that movie. Something about the way she was put together really kind of really kind of, I didn't didn't want to look at her. And they kept doing weird things with her. Like later, this is jumping ahead. <laughs> this is jumping ahead in the shortest movie we've ever covered. But there's like a scene where they're like referencing her later 
And then there's like a two second cut of just like the grandma in the chair. And she's just like, ah, did you see the fright he gave your granny? Master scared her so bad he had to put her in a trance. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she's fine. Yeah, never mind the fact that Grandma's been hypnotized this entire time. Really fun. <laughs> See, these are these are the sort of details you only catch when you watch a movie twice. So it's a good thing you're here. No, that was basically what I was thinking, like barely into the movie that that, that they were out on the town and Dracula's tearing apart all these kids' costumes, and I was just like, well. What's Grandma doing? She's still sitting at home. <laughs> Has anyone checked in on Grandma yeah, lately? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Sam's stoked that Dracula came to visit, and so they watch monster movies. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an anti-climax. It's like, look, Dracula, the actual monster of myth and legend, is here in my house. Oh my god, he's at my beck and call. Let's watch ten hours of movies. <laughs> 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 A monster marathon. And, like, even Dracula is, like, kind of getting sick of that shit. He's like, turn it off, Sam. Like, <laughs> I don't like this. Well, Sam, Sam's a very annoying character from the very beginning. Even before Dracula shows up, we establish the cute girl next door. Emma. And her popular friends. And, of course, all of her friends don't like Sam because he's the creepy weirdo. But, of course, she's the girl next door. So she sees past all of that. And she's all like, no, I want to be friends and it's fine. And, you know, then Sam's nervous and he doesn't want to go to the party. So he goes back inside to talk to his grandma, and the grandma's like, oh, are you going to go to your friend's party? He's all like, no, I don't want to do that. I got to stay and watch monster movies with my grandma. I know, but it's really weird because you would think Sam would be into that. So the grandma kind of wants to, like, change gears a bit and be all like, well, I'll cheer my grandson up. It's all like, oh, good, you can stay here and you can watch the monster movie marathon with me. And he's like... Yeah, I guess I'll do that. It's all like, what? What is this kid's deal? <laughs> Does he just need some Prozac or something? Because he he just seems to have mid-teen depression here. No, nothing seems to make him happy. And I think I overheard Emma invite you to her party. So are you going? Uh -uh. Oh, good. Because there's no way I could sit through the monster movie marathon on my own. It's our Halloween tradition. <sighs> I know, Grams, I know. Yeah, Emma's friends may have a point that she can do a lot better than Sam, and that's why they're kind of, like, in general away from him. Also, two of Emma's friends are blonde twin cheerleader types, which is, of course, a, a, a trope in children's animation, but in this case, it was because certain the animators were lazy and they didn't want to animate a, another child model, so they literally <laughs> copied and pasted the same girl twice. Almost. Like, their, their hair was styled a little different. One had a, a, a pigtail that was lower on the head, and the other one was higher on the top of the head. Okay. The, so the, and, and one had a C on her shirt for Captain, and the other one didn't. So <laughs> that's how you could tell them apart. <laughs> she was the captain of the friend squad. Yeah, yes. exactly. So Dracula... Those characters are. Dracula starts uh, ranting, and like he really starts gatekeeping about like what Halloween is supposed to mean. <laughs> And he hates that, like, no one's into the classic monsters anymore. He hates that people are dressing up as, like, astronauts and cowboys and ballerinas on Halloween and not scaring the bejesus out of everybody. And it's like, fucking, wait till, Sam, wait until, like, you're in fucking high school and college and then you're going to see that Halloween is going to change gears again and it's going to be about something a little more risque. Damn straight. It's going to turn immediately sexy. Exactly. Unfortunately. The spot that we are all, all currently in right now and every day we grow further and further away from god yeah. uh yeah but <laughs> never thought i'd see you take the side of god <laughs> that's just something i've been saying a lot lately yeah, i don't same. know why i'm not religious <laughs> at all but just with everything going on right now it's like yeah. my god with the state of things or maybe i will start being a praying man <laughs> what was i gonna say oh yeah well because this movie is a product of its time there's a dig at twilight one of the monster movies they watch is a twilight-esque movie oh edmund you will be mine someday so, what did you think, Count? That was rubbish! Absolute hogwash! Vampires are pretty boys that sparkle in the sun. Real vampires burn and crumble into dust when exposed to daylight. Dracula's, you know, pacing back and forth and he's bitching and complaining, Why does no one care about the classic movie monsters anymore? And then Sam just puts on the Tom Cruise mummy movie and Dracula goes, Ah, all right, no, I, fair enough. This is why they tried it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. So like, like, what is, they, they remade it. What the hell, man? The first one was so good. <laughs> Tim Curry was untouchable. Yeah. This is a travesty. 
and then he tries to show then he tries to show him Dracula untold and he's all like no I can't take it anymore and he stakes himself yeah, yeah. and then he and then he watches get out and starts feeling really bad about himself <laughs> oh all of those black people I killed oh that's so but hey, that, even think that, that brings up my point and I know this is a this is a kids movie and you can't show it but if sure. Dracula is really pissed off that like no one takes monsters like him seriously anymore, you know what's an easy fucking solution to that? Start killing people again. <laughs> That'll turn sure. people around right quick. Go for the really jugular. Sure. Now I'm just picturing a movie where Dracula is trying to convince Sam how progressive he is. I would have voted for Obama a third term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Dracula and Sam uh, come to this agreement where I guess Sam will teach him to be confident about his vampiric ways again, and Dracula will give him girl advice. <laughs> They're both boosting each other's confidence in a very broad children's animation way. Sam puts Dracula through sort of like a Dracula boot camp, which is just him doing the same three things over and over again. Vanish, shadow, fangs. That's it. That's apparently all Dracula needed to get his mojo back was vanish, shadow, fangs. An apparent Dracula super fan, Sam, says, all right, now look in this mirror and tell me what you see. And it's really, I think you're starting to show your true colors here. You know what I did appreciate, though, in that very stupid bit is all like, look in the mirror and tell me what do you see. And then Dracula and Myro just start laughing. And then Sam goes like, oh yeah, right. I did appreciate the fact that there wasn't a line. Oh right, Dracula's don't cast a reflection in the mirror. That's something that, oh vampire, thank you. Thank you for, this is a brisk 45 minutes. So thank <laughs> you for, for not, you know, fucking explaining the obvious here. Yeah, they probably had that line, but then some executive was like, no, we got to cut it to fit in more commercial time. Yeah, I mean, Sam just keeps drilling, you know, a vanished shadow fangs at Dracula. And then in the second half of the movie, when we see Dracula running around scaring those kids, I don't even think he does does the shadow thing once. No. What was the purpose of the boot camp? Yeah, he uh, hypnotizes the, the kid who dressed as a tw as a Twilight vampire into thinking he's a chicken. I'm a chicken, March. I know, I know. And uh, he, that's pretty much the movie. <laughs> that's, that is pretty much the movie, yeah. <laughs> aside, aside from, yeah. So, yeah, Dracula goes around, scares a bunch of kids. Sam goes to the party. Not only that, he... <laughs> And they say, oh, and you can bring your weird elderly friend to the party, too. <laughs> bring this adult man to this children's Halloween party. Well, as we've already established, there's no other adults in this neighborhood whatsoever. So maybe Emma is just kind of, like, thrilled to finally see, like, a couple of adults walking around. Like, my God, they're back. They're back, everyone! <laughs> this children run society. Uh, such an oddity seeing someone over the age of 12 in this universe. You have to come to our party. We must learn from you. One of them is the size of children. I will say, in this animated movie, in the field of animation where anything is possible, the costumes on these kids, fucking lame. Yeah. For any effort into any of them. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, feel like this is like my central gripe, is that the tail end of this movie takes place at a Halloween party, and like, almost none of these assholes are wearing costumes. There's this big build-up where the hypnotized grandma is sitting at a sewing machine and she's making the costume, and she kind of has a funny line where she's all like, Here you go, Sam. I'm not exactly sure what it is or why I did it, but I thought you'd need this for Emma's party. And thank you, Grandma. As she's thank like, you, Grandma. Yeah, that's just, her, that's just her dementia setting in. <laughs> they put all this effort into Sam's costume for the Halloween party. What's his costume? He's got a bandage around his head. And his shirt is ripped. Yeah, was he was he a zombie or? I, I mean, if I he guess. was a zombie, he wasn't the only zombie at that party because the two cheerleaders showed up dressed as zombies, and uh, Emma was was brought as Frankenstein. Yeah, well, and this was like weirdly confusing too. So like the two cheerleaders show up, they're wearing the exact same outfits that we saw them wearing earlier. The only thing that's different about them is their layer, mm -hmm. and I think they I think their hair color changed. But anyway, yeah, it, it's just like. The most nothing costume ever yeah. on these two little er, girls. Er, all these kids, because, you know, they're not working, they're all doing costumes on a budget this year. <laughs> That's true, yes. All, all these kids had to make their costumes themselves, because as we've established, no parents exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they start giving Emma shit immediately, where they're all like, Look at you! Wicked costume! 
you, ma'am. Not exactly what we all agreed to, though. And she's all like, yeah, well, you know, I just kind of had to do my own thing. She's the only one wearing an actual, because she's like fully Bride of Frankenstein. That's the only model that they bothered to put any effort into. Yeah, because Bride of Frankenstein is royalty-free. They couldn't get the rights to anything else that they wanted. And, and, the, and the other costume that really stood out was the uh, Kid in the Hot Dog costume. Yeah. Yeah, that Dracula that spends like a good costume. 20 minutes just haranguing, <laughs> like he was venting all of his frustrations. I'm like, you're not even a scary thing. Then what is this? A giant hot dog with a zigzag dollop of mustard. Not scary. Yeah? Well, boring old vampires aren't scary either. They're lame. How dare you, you oversized sausage. Yeah, the kid, the fat kid in the hot dog costume who was Tara Strong doing her most Tara Strongian voice that you can imagine. That's one of those ones where all like, I know who that is. Christ, what else happens? Uh, yeah, so when Dracula is giving like his pep talk to Sam... That led to legitimately the only laugh out loud line that I thought was in the movie. I just, I thought there was good delivery in this when he, uh, Dracula is like, all right, Sam, tell me about uh, y- your attributes. And he says, uh, let's see. I'm a monster movie geek. Okay, now turn that into a positive. <laughs> Good line, funny delivery. It was, you know, it was the only that made me laugh, and the only other kind of chuckle I got out of this again was a, a Dracula line reading. Sam's at the party, he's talking to Emma, and he's trying to like, I guess, I don't know, build himself up, and he's all like, you know, people think of me as like the creepy kid, but I'm not really the creepy kid. And then there's a weird cut to Dracula in bat form, hiding in a plant, and he just goes, nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a part two where like Emma leads Sam out onto the dance floor out in the backyard and they're they're having a moment and he looks up and he sees Dracula not in his bat form but in his human form but hanging upside down and he shoots him a thumbs up and I just thought like, that would be I don't know kind of a mood killer if you look up and you see an upside down man giving you the thumbs up or maybe that's just me it's his buddy Dracula he knows his deal he knows he hangs upside down so uh, the movie ends with the or, or no the, the party ends with the uh, the kid dressed as a Rastafarian uh, <laughs> character I won't, I won't fly in today it's called he's the first one to get his blood sucked yeah yeah he uh, announces the kid who was transformed into a chicken as like the winner of the Halloween costume contest because he stayed in character all evening. And second okay, place went to saying that he's dressed like a Rastafarian is actually being generous. He has a shirt that has the same colors as the Jamaican flag on it. Again, it's another fucking kid in this movie who's not wearing a costume. Mm-hmm. And it kind of bothers. But but the kid didn't have a Jamaican accent. So thank heaven for small miracles. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Right? And Dracula wins second place. No, he wins spookiest. Oh, costume. okay. Chicken Kid wins most dedicated most because he's stayed in character all night. Even though, taking this movie's runtime into account, he's only been a chicken for about a minute and a half at this point. Mm-hmm. But all night! Who cares? Yeah. It's fine. And then Dracula and Milo uh, go back to Transylvania. They uh, Thank you, Sam. Thank you for having this, for giving me this renewed sense of confidence. I am going back to Transylvania, presumably to terrorize the countryside again. <laughs> he says that news travels fast. Everyone knows that I'm now the scary monster again, and I've been invited to a shindig at Frankenstein's place. Not exactly. Uh, yes, a shindig, but, which is actually a line of the movies that, like, nobody says shindig anymore. Yeah, they're, they're, I feel like oh I God, was personally I say called shindig. out for that. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, but no, the, he said, like, I've been invited to uh, his the party at uh, his morgue. And he says, it's been a while since I've been to a morgus board. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that's, yeah. that's not bad. There's a couple of groaners. <laughs> There's a, I mean, if it we're is, talking it's... puns, okay. if we're talking puns, there's a couple of groaners that we could, at the very least, like mention here. Earlier on, Myro, what's his name? My, My, Myro? Yeah, I want to say Milo, but I think it's Myro. It's Myro, yeah. My, uh, Emilio Estevez Zombie is like talking about his background. He said, you know, like, I, I majored in, in Kenshin at Goolidge? That's a real strain of a pun right there. You really gotta think about that one for, for it to make sense. I just realized, he said, like, I went to Goolidge. Boo University was right there. It was mm. right there. It was just hanging right there. And they decided not. You know what? That's too, that, that's too low brown for Dear Dracula. I'm sorry. Mm. But, but the biggest groaner of a pun has to be moments before Sam goes to the party, Dracula's given a, a last-minute little confidence boost. He's hanging from a tree, and he says, Sink your fangs in and don't let go. Wish me luck. You won't need it, good fella. 
Oh, good fellas. Did you not hear that? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I did hear it, but I, I, I didn't hear it, hear it. Until... Yeah, that's for the one parent in the back who was forced to watch this with their kids. Can you imagine if, like, the writer puts that in there and then they say, it, like, really, okay, and here you go, here's the line, you're a good fella. Like, okay, cool, thanks. Do you get it, Ray Liotta? What? Good fella? You're a good fella? What? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna need... Five hundred more dollars, if you want me to keep yeah. going. If you want me to say that, top yeah. off my whiskey while you're at it. Yeah. What else you got? I want that stapler. I like that stapler. The other two things that I wanted to bring up with this movie were both visual things. But I don't know if they were gags per se, but just odd design choices by the animators. Yeah. In both Sam's grandmother's house and Dracula's house, there were silhouette pictures on the walls. Did you notice that? No. I okay. If, if I had, I probably would have assumed that they were just Halloween decorations. Well, Dracula's Castle has like those, I think that's what they're called, right? Where you just sit in profile and then you draw yeah. like the silhouette over it. Yeah. So yeah. Dracula had a couple of those in his castle and I thought, oh, well, that's odd. And then in the grandmother's house, I noticed that there were a few walls that had some of those as well. So I thought, is that how Sam and Dracula are going to bond over their <laughs> fucking love of silhouetting? <laughs> After they're done watching five hours of movies, they run out of things to talk about. So I was like, so into silhouetting, huh? And he's all like, yeah. Yeah, I do it with my grandma all the time. Cool. cool. The entire movie is just an awkward conversation. The, the kid writes well, yeah, the Dracula. They, they presumably spend like five hours just watching movies together. <laughs> the movie is the kid writes the Dracula. Dracula actually comes, and then the entire rest of the movie is an awkward conversation where they realize they don't have much in common with each other. It's the lamest like make a wish thing. <laughs> Also, and the other thing, wait, hold on. Know, what are the silhouettes of? Oh, um, I presume, I presume in Dracula's house, it's like his family, and I guess oh, no, okay. their, their, their head, the profiles. Of right. Heads. Okay. I got, I confused myself for a second because I was about to say Dracula doesn't cast a shadow, but he does cast a shadow. It's a reflection that he doesn't cast. Right. See, I forgot it too, and so even Sam, the number one Dracula fan, can be excused for forgetting that that happened because I got confused. What's the other thing you noticed? The other thing I noticed was at the very end of the movie, the cab that comes to pick up uh, Myro and Dracula is really tiny. It's yeah. l it's like smaller than the size of... Of the cab that brought them there. Was it the cab that brought them there? No, the cab that brought them there was a regular sized cab. I don't know what the gag... Did, was there a scene where like Dracula used magic to shrink it or whatever? Off I know screen that's a, before that's he not... shows, He's just like, I'm going to fuck with Emilio Estevez and make his car really make, tiny. Make the cab smaller. But it's like, what was the purpose of that? Like, what kind of fucking scaling fuck up was that for the on the art team? <laughs> I am a clown. Classic prankster. Ah, ah. But no, that, that that didn't get explained. It was just okay. The cab's here, and for some reason, it's like knee high. Weird. What a weird. Yeah. What a weird thing to be in a yeah. movie. All right, you got anything else you want to? Bring? I'm fucking going through my notes here to see if there is anything worth. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, like Dracula's whole quest in this movie is to get everyone to fear him again. And I mean, you brought up like a great point. You want him to fear people. You you want people to fear you again. M murder. Do do the mm. thing that Dracula that does and like murder people but i mean okay sure it's a kids movie if we want to keep things pg rated maybe if you want people to be scared of you stop constantly jumping out of nowhere and going blah because that's all he does throughout the entire movie five times in a row he's all like blah aren't you scared and they're all like no nah, not really and then sam yeah. runs him through the boot camp and then he jumps out and he goes blah but with like a little more energy and now everyone's like ah no and it's like all right i guess that's his own Move. You got your groove back there, Dracula. You... Have you seen the uh, Hotel Transylvania or its sequels? No, but I know someone who's worked on all of them. Did he get fired? <laughs> no, she uh, broke up with her boyfriend when she fell in love with a lesbian and then moved to Australia and I've never seen her since. Oh, right on. Cool. Yeah. yeah. She sounds badass. Awesome. She's great. I, I love her. <laughs> right on. I mean, there's like a running gag in that movie where better animated Dracula movie, let's just say that. Not a great series of films, but they're okay. The third one's the best, but like the running gag in those movies is human's perception of Dracula in that is that he's no longer scary anymore and there are like characters who come to the hotel and they're all like oh look it's Dracula blah 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 and then mm. Ad and then Adam Sandler Dracula is all like I don't say blah 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 where did that even come from I'm gonna say this movie I'm gonna say this movie Dear Dracula is entirely the reason why the Adam Sandler Dracula is so pissed off because uh, <laughs> this is the blahiest blah blah goddamn 
Dracula. Were those, are those movies a hit? Are, I, I guess they made three of them, but... Those movies made an insane amount of movies. The third one made serious bank. Okay. That explains why this movie was made. They wanted to cash in on the uh, this Dracula resurgence. Yeah, when did the first Hotel Transylvania come out? That's actually an excellent question. Probably 2012. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to look Whatever. it up because it probably is 2012. Kate, do you have anything else you want to add? Kate's falling asleep on my know. couch. <laughs> I mean, we're almost at an hour here, so we can just, we can just ramble for the rest Mm. of this. What, what else? What else has been on your mind lately? We can we can do an extra long recommendations <laughs> and shit. So what, um, what? So I don't know. Do you want to? Uh, so uh, J- Jameson, Kate, would you recommend people watch Dear Dracula? Yeah, definitely. Uh, what, watch it with like your your kids or your whatever. Your pets. Your pets. <laughs> yeah, watch it with your pets. Watch it with your spider that you can communicate with. <laughs> yeah, well, watch it with your tarantula. Probably appreciate that. Or uh, your cat might. Appreciate that. <laughs> I, I would probably recommend this to families. I guess it's yeah, yeah it's, it's a cute film. It's fine. It, <laughs> I mean, like clearly, like we're not the, the proper demographic for it. I think there may be better Halloween specials out there, but there's nothing too inherently wrong or stupid with this that I can say. No, whatever you do, avoid this movie at all costs. It's, no, it's a fine little no. Dracula, it's a cute Dracula story. Yep, cute Dracula movie. That's, mm. that is literally the bulk of what we can say about this, yeah. Have we finally recommended a Dracula movie on this podcast? Of the three Dracula movies we watched, yes, this is the only this one the so one. far that we recommend. So, sure, watch that or watch literally anything else. I wouldn't recommend not watching this, but I also wouldn't recommend watching it. If you watch it, that's your choice. I'm not here to dictate what you do with your life. You make your own choices. Mm. You make your own viewing decisions. Don't base everything on me. Have you been basing everything on me? This is completely off the rails now. You hear that, everyone? Kate. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm yelling because I don't. Jameson has the camera in such a way that I can't even see you at all. First question: Is your friend even still there? Is she like? No. Was, no, she left. Ten minutes into the movie, and she's. I gotta bounce. No, she. She. Uh, she ended up going to see her dad. So. Well, thanks for hanging out with us and <laughs> yeah. being on the podcast. I'm. I'm liking this. I. I think we may want to experiment further, Jameson, with podcast episodes where one, if not more, of us is inebriated throughout all of it. I think it's fun. I think it's like an, a, a fun energy. Yeah, at least one person, because like we have had ones where like all three people were intoxicated. We were tre- well, I've never been intoxicated during one of these things, but I, I mean, I've been I, drink- I mean, I've you, been you Scott, and I got pretty hammered during that uh, that Hulk Hogan movie. Yeah, it takes a lot of, I, I should say it took a lot of alcohol to make me drunk. My, my tolerance was sky high. Uh, I'm at the stage now where I've been sober for almost a year where if I... Hey, if yeah, I, congrats, buddy. If I had, like, a drink now, it would probably fucking send me to, like, the emergency ward or get... Yeah, because now my tolerance is at zero level. I was thinking the other day, the anniversary day, because the, actually the last drink I had was when we were recording an episode. The last drink I had was November 22nd when we recorded Master Q and we all had beers. That was the last time I had any sort of alcohol and I've been, every time the 22nd day of the month rolls around, I'm all like, oh, look at that. I made it, I made it another month. Right oh, the full year anniversary will, will be coming around on November 22nd, but I had the thought the other day, huh, that's after the U.S. election, isn't it? I may have picked a bad time to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> If November 5th rolls around and certain things line up the way I'm worried that they will, I may not make it to November 22nd, to be yeah, perfectly honest. Yeah, valid. yeah, You know what? You probably won't be the only one that's not going to make I'll be, it. I'll miss it by a few weeks, but no, but I don't think anyone would blame me. Mm. Oh, goodness. It's scary out there, huh? It's scary out there, folks. It is. Just in, yeah. time for, just in time for Halloween. Just in time for Halloween, but it's a spooky season. And, and on that note, you know, seeing as this is the final episode of Two Months of Halloween, Colin War on Christmas too. You know, if 
if we didn't go, if it feels like we didn't necessarily go the extra mile this year, we kind of apologize. Because last year, we did our wacky intros and everything. And the, and the costumes and the candy and whatever. We, we kind of got shit on our minds this year. There's circumstances that uh, kind of, kind of getting me down. I don't know about you, but... And just like we, we had stuff planned out, but, you know, like um, like going to Podstream, like that is, that just hasn't been available to us uh, this month. So you know we have to we have to adjust, and I'll be right back where we were at the at the start of this. But thank goodness for Zoom, because without it, yeah. without it, we wouldn't have any episodes of this podcast this year. So this yeah, we been, really haven't missed a, our stride. Really hasn't uh, let up. We've been doing good. We've been doing all. Yeah, right. we've, we've, we've been, been consistent. consistent from last year. You know, so yeah, and spending time with friends is like always a good way to uh, get us through <laughs> the hard times. It's all we can do, and it's all we can ask of ourselves currently, right now. We're just continuing to uh, to be kind and to be patient and continue to weather the storm. So in the interest of weathering the storm, Kate, Jameson, that's your cue to thank you. Uh, <laughs> what, what have you been doing uh, with yourself lately? What uh, ha- Have you watched or read or listened to anything that you really loved and you would recommend people check out? Well, if you're looking for something to do virtually with your friends, you can play Dungeons and Dragons. That's a really fun thing to do. Mm. Um, Kate's an awesome DM, and she paints her own figurines with it as well. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have um, Jairus and I have a friend. His name's Devin. He's got this project going, a uh, solo project music called Lionhearted. Definitely check that out. Mm-hmm. And um, subscribe to Cutie Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be Coco Melon. Smash that bell. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 and also, if you're not subscribed to this podcast, you definitely should be doing that. Yeah. What, are you, what are you What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? <laughs> Thank you. I think we, I think we need the subscribers more than PewDiePie needs the subscribers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> This will be the episode that turns everyone on. This will, this will be the real turning point for us. I feel it. Yeah. It's Dear Dracula, Dear Dracula or bust. Jameson, what have you been into lately? What do you What do you recommend people check out? For, like really into uh, nothing. I can uh, I can put out there. I've just been working like a dog as uh, as per usual in these October times. So everyone look forward to the DLC of Mech Warrior Five. It's so funny that you brought up QB Halloween. I tried giving that a, a shot last night, but I didn't go too far. So I just turned it off and wound up. Watching watching Ghostbusters instead. So everybody, check out the original Ghostbusters movie. That's, uh... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my recommendation. It holds up. It holds up, yeah. Watch yeah. Bill Murray just ad-lib his way through a project he really doesn't care about being in. <laughs> hey, what are your thoughts on Ghostbusters 2? I haven't seen it, actually. Really? That should be... It, it seems like as time has gone on, more and more people put that in the bad movie pile. I've always had, like, a really soft spot for it. It does rehash the exact same plot as the first Ghostbusters, but no one sleepwalking through it. Peter McNichol is absolutely insane as a sub-villain in it. And the ad-libbing is still on point. There's some great ad-libbing. There's uh, Bill Murray's reintroduction in Ghostbusters 2. It starts off with him hosting a hokey, fake, uh, psychic friends type show. And he has all these weirdos on. Just his ad-libbing through that, I think, is really consistently hilarious. So, I don't know. It's been a while since I watched Ghostbusters 2, but I think it's okay. It's not as good as the first one, but I I think it's all right. Is that your recommendation for this episode? No, no, no. I'm trying to think of something else. The Vancouver International Film Festival was here earlier this month, and so I was able to stream a bunch of movies on that. Uh, I saw a couple that I really enjoyed. There was a movie I really liked called Jumbo, about a young girl who falls in love with a -a tilt-a-whirl, like deep romantic love with a a, a carnival attraction. It's one of the sweetest movies I've ever seen. By the end of it, darn it, you really want those two to get together. Aww. And have have little tilt-a-whirl babies. (laughs) I'm also going to throw a plug to a friend of mine because lately uh, I've been watching a bunch of his videos and they're really consistently hilarious and they've been bringing a lot of joy to me lately. So my friend Garrett Quirk is a YouTuber and he goes by the Surly Bartender and he has a whole series of three-minute instructional videos on how to make uh, various cocktails and he does it with the uh, throwaway uh, fuck you attitude of the surliest of bartenders. Uh, he's really funny. The timing is great on these videos. The editing is really fucking solid. So you can check out Surly Bartender on YouTube. Yeah, Garrett Quirk. You should get him on the podcast sometime because he's a hilarious guy. Uh, yeah, watch his YouTube stuff. Right on. Great. Cool. So there we go. We did it. We wrapped up another That's two it. months of Halloween. Halloween movies. We're, we're done. We're we done ended, for the year. We ended on such a high note. Yeah. <laughs> now... Now, Kaz, before you say your dumb toasted frogs bit that you sign off on with, I want to remind you, um, remember last year when I tried slipping, um, 
Buyer Beware, you're in for a scare into all our Halloween episodes, and it drove you up the wall. You notice that I haven't done that again this year? I, I did picked it, up I, that, it, that it annoyed you, and I don't like doing that to my friends, so how do you think I goddamn uh, feel with your stupid sign-up? That's news to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, it, it didn't drive me up the wall, Jameson. I was just mm -hmm. worried about litigation from the team of R.L. Stein, who, as listeners will know, completely sued our asses, and we are we, we are thousands in debt to the yes. Goosebumps company. So, which is why we still got to churn out these episodes. <laughs> which is why I created an original catchphrase that no one has that we can brand as our own. But you know what? You're, you're just you're just doing it because you like pestering me because you're a bully. I'm not a bully. I'm just ribbing ya. Also, it's a podcast. They have catchphrases in them. I don't know. Look, all right, that's fine. Hey, everyone, thanks for listening to the episode. That was Dear Dracula, directed by Chad Vandeweer. Kate, thank you for being the guest on the show. Thanks for committing to this, Kate. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you like us, <laughs> please like subscribe on Spotify. If you're listening to this on Spotify, we also have a YouTube channel that has a visual element, so please check that out. Follow us on Instagram at the com and... I said dot com. I don't know why I said that. At least you didn't say www at the start. <laughs> and look. Oh, speaking of Instagram. Okay, so uh, this is a little something. So um, I said, I think a couple of episodes ago, that if we got a thousand followers, we will be able to post active links on our Instagram page. Oh, we page. got that? We, we are at a thousand followers. Fuck uh, yeah. Uh, turns out I was wrong. It's oh. 10,000 followers. And oh, you, we're never going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> we're never going to so, reach that. I just want to say thank you to everyone who is following us on Instagram. It was just like a, a weirdly nice thing to see that number go up. I know most of you followed us just so we would follow you back. And that's in, in exactly what happened. And you have no interest in the podcast whatsoever. But I know there's like at least 10 of you. Like people are starting to contact me. Because they've listened mm -hmm. to the show and they are like sending messages out. And it's like, holy shit, I know for a fact that we have an audience. It might be five people, but we actually have we an audience. Them. And that's kind of wild to me now. So thank you. We will never get 10,000 followers. So don't expect <laughs> those active links anytime soon. Instagram's a terrible company. No one should be on it. But please continue to follow us. Please follow us there. And look, can I just say that if you are an amphibian investigator out there and you are in the middle of a cold case, you know what? Why don't you stay toasty? Just try stay toasty. It's getting cold out there. Put a jacket on. We worry about you. All right? Great. We love you. All right. We love you, Detective Frogs. We want you to stay toasty. Jameson doesn't want you to stay toasty, but I do. I'm an advocate. Detective for, Frogs can go to hell. For as detective far as Frogs I'm everywhere. Wow. Ending on a real down note. <laughs> All right. Happy That's Halloween, it. That's everybody. done. That's the podcast. That's <laughs>